here in our school, we are two schools in one school. I have a neighbor school, which is Kabdasem. They were unable to open their school due to swelling water in the river. So they, they hoped that, they, they, or they requested to be hosted here. Mm -hmm. And we are now hosting. We provided them with, uh, with two classes, one for grade class eight, another one for grade four. So they are there and in our school we have class eight and grade four. Mm -hmm. So but we run concurrently parallel. Uh, we are parallel classes, each school are manning their pupils. I think one of the achievements when we we opened the school this uh, this time after a long break is at least one hundred percent turnout for our Grade four and class eight people for both schools. That is um, an achievement because most of the schools did not get that. Mm -hmm. So we are very thankful. Mm -hmm. For now, the challenges we have is water. We have a shortage of. We, we, in this school, we, 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 we are relying on a borehole, and uh, there is a breakdown in the borehole. So for now, we are using dam water. So there is a spring with, 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 with a bit clean water, but it is, uh, because of the community here, it is not enough for the school and the community. We have insecurity, very much. It affects both schools, Kamdesem and here. So at times, we, we are both to, 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 to sleep in the bushes. <laughs> Maybe because of insecurity. In, in mm -hmm. So, but what, anyway, we, the, the, the good thing is that we have Ascaris around here, which, which the government have, have, have sent. So when there is little need, they, they, they come to go rescue. And then, but in, before they, they, they rescue, we, we, we have to have taken refuge somewhere. <laughs> Last year, in 2019, we had 17 candidates and we had the best mean score. We had a mean score of 320. That was the highest mean score in the sub-county. Sub we were number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, we, were, we stayed in this school for the first time. We started for exam in our centre for the first time after five years. When schools opened on 12th no October, last some two months ago, we were unable actually to open our school because since the time we left from March, nobody was around. There are no villagers because people moved out of this place some time, long time ago, about six years ago. And uh, the only people who have been staying around are the pupils and the security officers who are looking after the school. This school has remained deserted since March, as evident with the outgrown thicket and bushes in its environs. But since the reopening of schools in October, learners did not resume their classes in this environment because not only for fear of insecurity, but also impassable roads due to floods. Insecurity is also still a challenge because that is why the villagers have not come back. That is why the school is still deserted and you can see how bushy it is. This is also contributed by insecurity because if there were people around, then even parents would have come to clear the school. Mm -hmm. So this one is also a challenge. So every time when you think of coming to this school, you have to be escorted by either the GSU vehicle or the security officers who stay around the school. 
and that is why the security officers are ever present in the school. This school cannot be left because sometime when one of our teachers was killed in 2017, we ran and we closed the school. But now when we came back, we found the government has put security officers in the school. Currently we have 34 in class 8. The school we had 244 before we closed for COVID-19. Schools are going to open on 4th. And you can see the situation of our school, it is still bushy. Last week we came and uh, burned the grass around. That's why you can see this place is now a bit cleared. And we are optimistic that parents will come. We have organized for parents to come and clear the school. So probably next weekend, parents will be here to clear the school so in preparation for opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And you can see also the water in the river has subsided. But if it rains, then I do not know. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell. Maybe we shall not even be able to come back. In the sub-location, we have seven schools. But so far, we have opened three schools. The other schools, it is because of insecurity. We have the Partalo, we have Ramacha, we have Karma and Sokonin that have not resumed up to date because of insecurity. Yeah. There is school like Ramacha mm -hmm. and Partalo, they were vandalized. Even this one for Kabindasu, it had been vandalized and a teacher was shot before the security officers were brought into school. Mm -hmm. The Arabal Primary School also, it was vandalized. Mm -hmm. And we lost a watchman there. He was shot also. Survival means that we have here is just to come closer with the officers within and to follow instructions from the officers when there is attack. Some, st some of the people know how to, nini, to differentiate between the bandits and the officers. And when they hear the gunshots, they lie down and they approach the officers for security. We have a dormitory that is meant to accommodate girls. So we have, accommodate, we have a big number of girls, we have over 80 girls. It is only, it was actually meant for all the, both boys and girls, but at the moment we have no, we have no facility for boys. We only have a facility for girls and we even have no beds. So these girls sleep on the floor. Yeah, and our boys, our boys also sleep in one of the classes. My appeal to the community is if government maybe can provide more security to the, to the villagers, maybe they'll come back. But it's also my appeal that they come so that we, we build the school together and at least we feel that there are people around us. Because every time it is only the pupils and the teachers and the security officers, we also fear. The security now it is not that so bad like before. I want to ask the community to come and settle within the school compound, even if they settle within the school, so that they can stay with their children. Even as administrators, we are just around, and we request them also to come and join us within. When I came to Kapindasu, I'm the first female head teacher to head the school, and I thank God because I've always done well. And uh, I also believe everybody is vulnerable, even men are vulnerable, just as women. So I felt I also need to be here as a mother and as a teacher, as a role model to the girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I felt there are no mothers around, so I'm the only mother. And I give them hope. This is my homeland. This is where I was brought up. Mm -hmm. This is where I, was, I also learned. Mm -hmm. So I want to believe, I want to be one of the people maybe who will help the community to come back. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm sticking here.
The most parents from this region could not even afford to keep their children, especially in terms of bus fare uh, plus other extra upkeeps, uh, if these children were taken to those schools where we were supposed to be uh, merged with. It was not very easy, mm -hmm. especially to cope up uh, under such conditions. But all in all, we manage, mm -hmm. all in all we manage, uh, because the primary school here, we were given a whole block um, to, 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 to host our students. Mm -hmm. We have a classroom for the students. We have a classroom as an office. Uh, we have another classroom as a, as a store. Currently, I have 37 candidates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. registered. And all of them are registered. Mm -hmm. nice. And all of them are in school. We talk about uh, mathematics and motion. I have not received any desks, but uh, what, I've, what I've received from the GAM, they were able to go provide the students with masks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a great step also. We were able to get some well wishes, particularly from France. They managed to raise 3.8 million. Mm -hmm. And from the community and the parents of this school, we managed to raise 1.2. Mm -hmm. So we have about 5 million, mm -hmm. which we are currently using to construct those four permanent uh, standard classes. Mm -hmm. Come January, we are now uh, expediting the ex extra construction of those classrooms. Mm -hmm. We have adequate tents. Uh, precisely, we have five tents, mm -hmm. which we are going to use, especially with the, those other extra classrooms. Mm -hmm. So I am sure our children will be very comfortable, especially in this Majina ni Parkolo Sharif, mwalimu mkuu ngambo primary school. Wananchi wa America Location walituonea huruma na wakaamua tukutupatia. Tuka tu uwanja ama ardhi ya kuweka shule. Tulipofungua ilikuwa ni darasa hili peke yake. Sasa tunatumia hili darasa kama kama darasa la la candidates darasa la nane na hema ile hema tunatumia kwa grade 4. Alafu ile mengine ya pili tunatumia kama staff room. Mm -hmm. yeah, lakini kwa sababu ya joto jingi, jua kali eh, pale ndani kwa hema haikaliki. Ndio unaona to, to, we opted to use under threes. Uh, then... I have 312 uh, children. Turnout for class 8 is very poor. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe because of the ongoing uh, circumcision ceremony for boys. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have all my girls except one. Uh, she's just at home. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe I don't know why uh, she's not uh, coming to school. Mm -hmm. I have 25 candidates. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I have only 11. Our PS visited us here in this site. They pro he promised us uh, uh, 1 million. But up to, up to now, bado hatuja, hatuja pata atafununu kwa mbaya. Hiko ama inakuja. Kwa natumia katu hivyo. Mm -hmm. Kuna mjoza za kama, sisi tume, tume, we experienced the same problem with the, the parents of the children. So, ili ata wawo kujiweka, imekuwa shida. Manyumba ya mechukuliwa, mashamba yao ya mechukuliwa, Watu wengine mbuzi wa imeenda. Sababu floods imekuja tu gafla na kusweep mm -hmm. the whole area. For about three months now, grade four pupils at Ngambo Primary School 
have been studying under this tent which was donated to them about two weeks when the schools reopened on the 12th of October. And even though it may be uncomfortable because of the high temperatures that is experienced within this region, this is the only option they have. We'll scare over the radios, Kwamba we shall be uh, given desks. So I also had hope, big hope that we shall be considered Kopewa uh, Viti. But uh, I uh, when I first started that uh, the, the pale, the kambio, in fact, the kambio, you will be considered later on. The kapata abari kwamba madeske madawati amepayano na mimisa kwa kati awala mbao mkwa considered. That's a hali nekakatu hivyo. That's a sina penye nitafanya tempia. Tuna zina kungulua januari tare. Tare nene, yeah. How do you feel about that? In fact, the nice if by kwa sababu ni kama uh, kulingana sasa na hali vile iko ni kama siko tayari kuna maji kwa hivyo maji ya kunawa maji ya ku, ya, ku, ya, ku, ya kunywa tuko nayo lakini hofu yangu kubwa ni mali pa kukaa labda tu tukae na hapa bado pa nchi kavo jua ni kali sasa kuna kusumbuliwa sana in fact, kidogo tu kutokekaa sasa hivi kidogo tu utaona watu wakikuja na kupita hapa hivi sababu karibu kila mahali imefungwa sasa kuna njia hapa ambayo inapita ndani ya shule Naomba pia hata na wazazi wajipidishe kuachilia watoto uh, wakuje sababu especially class uh, both classes kwa sababu wote hawa sasa karibu wakuwe pre candidates grade 4 na hawa tayari Nafikiri mebaki ito karibu miyesi miwile opa ufanya mitiani yao. 17 schools with over 3,000 learners were affected by floods in Baringo County. 12 are primary schools and 5 are secondary schools. The schools that have been totally submerged by Lake Baringo are Ngambo Primary and Secondary, Salabani Primary and Secondary, Lake Baringo High School, Nasukuro Primary School and Leswa primary school Tumekuwa na changamoto mingi kasa babu madrasa mengi haina milango haina madirisha haina furniture ya kutosha mingi ilikuwa vandalized na kuibwa wakati wa eviction watu ambao viliibwa ni vitabu ah na wadi za walimu sola na peti tangi ya maji Mapati na vitu vingi, milango ya chuma, milango mine, uh, milango ya mbao, saidi ya kuminaine, madrisha, yote hafiko. This is a staff room where teachers at Kimonio Primary School have been operating from since October. With no basic necessities, the teachers have been forced to share this little office space to ensure the running of the school. Nyumba za walimu, walimu mali yao ilipotea malazi, vyombo vya kupikia na kila kitu. Sasa saa hii walimu wanakaa kwa, katika mazingira ya mabaya. Wanajikaza tu kwa sababu ya masomo ya watoto wa darasa la 4 na 8. Wengi wanatokea shule saa 10 wakielekea a back on town wengine wanaishi molo wakirudi kila asubuhi. The school has a population of over 800 students from ECD, 
and class 8 pupils. According to the teachers and parents living around the community, school reopening in January will have its share of challenges. January ni mungu tu kwa sababu atujui wote wakirudi kuanzia nasari ECD baka form 1 ile vazi ziki dogo imepaki avita tosha tutakuwa na changamoto tunaomba serikali kuangalie namna masomo itaendelea mwaka ujao chini na namna vile tutakavyoanza hii shule watoto wasome ninaona kuwa ni kwamba ni ngumu na kana kwamba kuna msaada serikali watuzaidia ili tupate kuanzisha shule hii na kuendelesha masomo kwa watoto wetu vizuri tunapopata vitu ambazo zahitajika katika shule hii tungetaka directives kutoka kwa serikali mara wizara hii inasema muondoke wizara ya interior ambayo inahusikana na maneno ya eviction sijui ni interior sijui ni wapi wanasema muondoke alafu wizara ya elimu inasema watoto lazima wafungue shule sasa which is which si tunashindwa sasa hata sisi hata sisi wazazi mimi mwenyewe binafsi watoto wangu nitawapeleka wapi niwahamishe mahali nimehama ama niwarudishe hapa na sasa angalia unapoangalia hii shule tangu ilipojengwa serikali yeye kujua wa watu walikuwa wameruka boundary Some kilometers from Kimonio Primary School sits what used to be Kapokato Airlight Academy. The private boarding school was vandalized during the evictions that happened in August. <laughs> the empty floors that would host tens of students stares at us after their walls were torn apart. This is all that is left of the school, a dormitory and a permanent structure that was under construction. Hiyo shule ilipomolewa e, upande sote kuanzia darasa la kwanza mpaka darasa la nane. Na hii shule ilipopomolewa sio asasi wa ama sio sisi wenye tulipomolewa ilipika mahali penye tu e, e, maaskari walikuja akatuambia ati hii shule ipomolewe na e, bahati mbaya ama bahati mzuri atuelewi iliendaje. But even as destruction swept through some of the schools across the region, something different was happening in other areas. The community here opted to protect these schools' infrastructure, for this was their only refuge then and still is. Wakati mambo ya eviction to leave tibo pale. Tukakuja hapa. So tukaka hapa. Ndio mnaiona shule iko vile iko kwa sababu tulikuja tukafanya hapa kama nyumbani juu atakuwa na nyumbani tukibomwa hii maisha yetu sasa ni kuisha juu tunafuatana na majami singine juu maisha ya sasa ni masomo so tukikaa tukibomwa shule ni kumaanisha sasa kisasi kijacho atuge wajali ndio shule kabaki vile ilikuwa januari kifika tarehe na shule funguliwe tuko tayari wanafunzi warudi shule hata ngawa tuko mahali tuko Mm. wanafunza tarudi shuleni until serikali watupe haki yetu watu amulie ni nini tafuata hapo At Maria Shoni Primary School learning continued uninterrupted but with a slight drop in the attendance of the pupils the school recorded a population of 60 pupils out of the 90 students who are registered to sit for their KCPE exam come next year April the school received 70 new desks from the national government as well as sanitizers, masks and temperature guns. Come January, the school, which has a population of 750 students, says it will have a challenge of maintaining social distancing due to their high numbers. Despite the challenges that were encountered as a result of the August evictions in the Mao region, majority of the students were able to resume their classes in most schools within the region. However, some schools did record a low turnout in their numbers. During the holiday, there were tribal clashes and some of them vocate to another areas. So, not all of them had, had reported to school. We have found out that 
two of class four people have got married and we have reported the matter to the chief and they are they are following up. Mm -hmm. How old are they? They are about twelve to thirteen years old. Mm -hmm. And others they have they have gone to another school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On January, we, have, we, have, we will have a lot of challenges because classes are few, there are no desks. So, and we get water from this center. It's about one kilometer from here. So we need readily available water here in school. And we are following the measures of, of means of education. Mm -hmm. People wear masks, they wash their hands, mm -hmm. and and we take their temperatures every day when they come to school. I ask parents to talk to their children. You come on maybe class four children, they are very young. They are not supposed to get married. Mm. Yeah. Kwa upande wa wala ambao walipachikwa mimba, hapo ndiyo ninasema labda mzazi ndiyo neza kuwa amelegea kwa majukumu yake. Kwa sababu yeye ndiye anajua ile shida ambaye amepata na anajua njia kufuatilia ndiye aweze kuripoti na akiwa aje ripoti sasa makosa ni yake shida moja ambayo inapatikana hapa ni kwamba shule ni mbali watoto wenye wanaenda shule wanatembea mbali ndio wafike shule na unesapata tena mahali labda kulikuwa na shamba ya shule huenda imejengwa na watu binafsi so serikali kupitia kwa wizara ya elimu wafuatilie kujua mashamba ya shule wafuatilie kujua tuseme kuangalie umbali ambayo watu wana, watoto wanatembea kwa sababu watoto wengi wanatembea mbali kilomita nane, tano. so mtoto akienda mbali shule hiyo inachangia kufanya asiwe na hamu ya kusoma During our tours, we confirmed four schools in Mariashoni were vandalized with a varying degree of damage. The schools are Block 10, Timo, Caprocato, and Kimonio. The reopening of school on the 4th of January will pose a challenge to parents who still reside in this region and depend on these institutions for their children's education. The government was expected to issue title deeds to the occupants living in the Mao region by end of December 2020 to end the land conflict that has resulted in the deaths of many. A multi-agency team was set up, including officers from the internal security, lands and other special units. The process was however stopped by the court on the 15th of December 2020 after the Ogiek community moved to court protesting that they had not been consulted. January 4th is just a few days away. Yet, much remains to be done in this whole region to ensure children can resume learning and cover the gap lost to the pandemic. Ruth Sarmoy, MTV.